At this time, I'd like to introduce uh, Chris Gunderman, who will be presenting 2023 State of Network Automation Survey Results. Chris is a passionate creative technologist and a strong believer in technology's power to aid the betterment of humankind. Uh, Chris has uh, given presentations in uh, 34 countries and five continents, and he joins us today from West Texas. Uh, it's a pleasure to have him back at the NANOG stage. Welcome, Chris. Good morning. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Uh, wow, the lights are bright today. Uh, quick show of hands, who was at the social last night, enjoyed the social? Yes, and thank you for doing that and then still making it here first thing this morning. Appreciate you. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about a survey. So if you were at Nanog 87, you might have seen my lightning talk when I kind of introduced this idea. Um, and the one thing, you know, I'll tell a little bit of myself, I wear many hats. Um, I've written some, some bash scripts, I've written some, uh, some Python scripts. Uh, I've written some patents, um, but I'm definitely not a professional researcher or statistician. And so all of the things I'm going to show you, I want to take with a grain of salt. I think a couple of reasons. One, again, I, I think this is probably not a statistically relevant survey that we did. Um, and it's a little bit of self-selection of who answered it, right? So for example, um, as we'll see, it comes out to about a number of, say, 40% of, of our networks are, are automated. However, out of 78 respondents, 76 were able to talk about what tools they use to do automation, which I think means that most people who may not be doing any automation self-selected out and didn't take the survey. So again, just think about this. You know, this was sent to the Nanog list and some Slack channels where people are doing automation things. So um, the sample size may be a little, or the sample itself may be a little skewed. Um, but anyway, I think it is important to talk about this because uh, as I think we all know, especially if you look at the agenda of this conference in the last few for several years, uh, network automation is pretty hot right now. Uh, we definitely like to talk about it. Um, but in my experience, we've been talking about this pretty heavily for at least, I don't know, 12 years, I think, you know, since OpenFlow came out and SDN became kind of a, a buzzword for a while. Um, this idea of network automation and orchestration and like really getting into the nuts and bolts of running the network as, as a full system, as a distributed system and looking at it that way has been talked about. Um, but for a long time, it was unclear whether we were just talking about it or if we were actually doing anything about it. Um, there have been a couple surveys before this one um, in, in years past, and I wanted to kind of pick up that torch and, and keep going with a little bit different direction. Um, so hopefully this year's survey will set a nice baseline and we can talk about it more because there's a lot of reasons that we are talking about automation, right? Networks are definitely getting more complex. They're getting larger. Uh, I think Mahesh had a number of uh, like IoT devices that are online now on one of his early slides yesterday morning, uh, which was a giant number. Um, I mean, this obviously started when we started bringing smartphones to work with us and then maybe tablets and, and now there's sensors and all kinds of other things connecting to the networks. Uh, plus, our networks have gotten a little bit more complex. Um, we don't just have, you know, a LAN and a WAN. Uh, a lot of times we're connecting to different cloud providers, maybe a, maybe a SD-WAN provider. And so interconnection and, and, and connection between networks has become even more important and, and more critical for a lot of folks. So we've got more devices and more complex networks, I think. And, um, not necessarily a ton more people to do the work. And so automation becomes something that I think is really interesting and we should be talking about. But again, where are we actually at? Like how much automation is really out there? Uh, I guess it's hard to tell because um, depending on who you talk to, it may be a lot or, or it may be none. And so we launched this survey at Nano 87 to find out and uh, the results are in. So first, I think it's important again to kind of go over who answered the survey. Uh, there were 78 responses. Uh, which is okay, wasn't amazing. I'd like to see more, hopefully, if we do this again, which I plan to. Um, but that's a pretty good representation, I think, because there were 20 different countries represented uh, across 14 different types of organization. And the people who individually answered the survey were in nine different uh, distinct job roles or functions. And there's a really wide range of network uh, scale, different sizes of networks here. So first I wanna kind of run through this. So countries, um, you can see that the US and Canada are disproportionately uh, represented. That makes sense because this was launched at Nanog. I'm an American. I hang out in places where other Americans hang out, and that's where I shared the link. Um, so that's what happened. Uh, here's the actual breakdown. So the US, 45 of the people answered uh, from the US out of, out of the 78 that answered. Uh, Canada was number two there. You can see also Netherlands and France or other countries that had uh, multiple folks answer the survey. And then maybe slightly more interesting for this crowd and, and this survey is um, what types of networks do these organizations support that answered the survey? Um, again, it's kind of hard to tell on, on the graph here, so I'm going to do it in text, especially for folks in the back. Uh, ISPs is, is the number one with, with 23 of the responses. Enterprise IT networks were also fairly well represented. And then public cloud operators, and you can kind of see it goes down. Whether NSPs should be broken out from ISPs, we can, we can debate for the next survey, I guess. But um, here's kind of a breakdown of 
wherever we fell. So again, a pretty good range there. And then who actually answered the survey uh, individually? Um, network architects or designers was the, was the biggest one, but really close behind them was network engineers or operators. Then there's kind of the managers or directors. Um, there are some folks who are you know, at least self-identifying as network automation engineers or developers, and then a little bit of executive leadership and, and some other folks as well. And then as far as size of networks that were represented uh, by the survey, uh, you can see one of the ways I tried to scope size was I asked a couple questions. One about how many IXs people connect to, which again isn't apples to apples at all, um, but was some kind of a benchmark of, of, of scale of network, I think, and also how many routers people had in their networks. Um, and so if we look at this, um, the minimum number I access connected to was zero. The maximum was 60. Um, the mean comes out to 8.7 and, and median is four. So that's, that's kind of the, the range there. And the number of routers, the minimum was a network with two routers. The maximum someone claimed to have was 30,000. Um, that makes the mean almost 2,000, but the, but the median is 93. So again, a pretty wide range, um, obviously skewed towards the, the lower side of those numbers. All right, um, but uh, what did we actually say, right? So that's, that's who answered the survey, but, but what did they actually say? I think this is kind of the big headline slide. So we asked people, you know, thinking of the entire network lifecycle from design through deployment and provisioning and onto maintenance and troubleshooting, um, how much of the network is automated today? And so this isn't like how many, you know, if you could count up 100 networks, how many of them are automated? It's within your own network, how much of it is automated? Um, so, you know, maybe nice to see only, only two responses said 0%. Um, but we also see, you know, zero answers for 90 or 100 percent, which I think is reasonable. Um, it, it'd be really hard to be at that point. I think it's a high bar. The way this kind of shakes out in the middle here is uh, through these numbers. So zero to 20 percent was the biggest group with with 24 respondents, um, and you can see kind of evenly through that 30 to 40, 50 to 60, 70 to 80, and then with none in the 90 to 100 range. Um, so because we asked, so 50% was an answer, so I counted 50% in both the 50% and below and the 50% and above, um, but it definitely breaks out as, as most folks are below. And then again, if we look at the mean and median, it's right around 40%. Um, so again, this isn't, you know, 40 out of 100 networks are automated. It's that, you know, 40 tasks within everyone's network are, are automated is kind of the answer we're getting here. And uh, if that's how, you know, how much is being automated, what is being automated, I realize this is also an eye chart, so I'll jump here. The numbers are kind of weird, it's not actual math. The question was, um, are these things fully automated in your network, or are they partially automated in your network? So device deployment, 26 respondents said it was fully automated, uh, and 32% said they had done some automation on that, right? So the total answer is 58. Um, whether or not those numbers overlap, I don't know, so that's why it's not actual math, because the same person could have, could have said that could have said the same thing twice. They could have said fully and partially. Um, we, that, that wasn't stopped on the survey. I don't know if they would have or not, but so I don't know that those numbers add up, but this is kind of how it breaks down. So device deployment was number one, service provisioning number two, uh, firmware and software upgrades uh, number three, and you can kind of see how it goes on down um, to network design being the bottom one there, which makes sense, right? I mean, it's fairly hard to automate uh, actual network design, um, although there's you know, some ways to do traffic engineering and things like that. Excuse me. Um, and then how are we actually doing the automation? Um, and you'll see there's kind of an artifact here because we like, had to change some things in the survey partway through. So uh, open source applications with paid support ends up twice, so we have to add those up. And again, just to make it easy to look at, um, 69 out of the 78, so about 89% of folks said they're using Homebrew, they're writing their own scripts, they're doing something themselves in-house, figuring it out, developing their own code. 78% um, of respondents said they're using some kind of open source software without any paid support. Uh, about 31% of folks who responded said they're using a commercial application. Uh, and then 17% uh, said they're using an open source software with, with paid support. Uh, and then this might be interesting, maybe not, maybe you know, folks who are working on this uh, already know this, but um, how is it being automated? So we first asked, you know, what languages are you using? Um, out of 76 people who answered this question, so two people didn't answer, uh, out of the people who answered the whole survey, 73% said they're using Python. That's obviously by far um, the winner here. So that's what's being used most uh, by folks. And you can see uh, shell scripts is kind of number two, and Perl is, is right there with them, and some other languages. So everything that came up at least twice uh, is on the, uh, the right-hand side there. And then um, there's some other things that came in and that were answered. They were just, you know, at least one person said they were using um, JSON, which probably isn't actually a language, but I understand why that got answered there. Rock is and is actually pretty powerful. That's fun. 
Uh, also, then we asked about the open source softwares that they're using. So Ansible was the big winner here. So again, on this question, out of the 78 people who answered the entire survey, only 60, 60 people answered this question. And of them, 36% said they're using Ansible. Um, so not quite as big of a winner as, as Python, if we want to call them winners, uh, but definitely pretty widespread. And you can see how it goes down from here. Netbox and Notabot as the sources of truth. Makes sense in there. Norner and Napalm uh, and kind of goes down. And uh, this kind of breaks out. So this one, I listed everything that on the slide that got mentioned at least twice, because there was a bunch of things that got mentioned once that aren't on here. But um, I plan on putting a report together that'll have all the results in it to show that as well. Uh, and then we also asked about commercial software. So I figured I'd, I'd put this up here as well. Uh, this was a place that only out of 78 people who answered the entire survey, only 28 people answered this question. Um, and of them, uh, Cisco NSO was the biggest commercial software that people were using, but that's seven uh, out of 78 responses. Um, so these are pretty low. Um, there were 19 other tools that were mentioned once. These are the ones that were mentioned twice. Um, so much lower there. So kind of, I think I have another slide on that further up. Um, we'll kind of look at a breakdown of those things. So, so that's kind of a snapshot, at least of what you're telling yourselves. Um, we're talking to ourselves here about how we're using automation tools uh, in the network. Uh, I think in some of the other answers, there's some um, maybe some answers into how we can get more adoption. Maybe, maybe there's some clues here. I don't know. So one thing we did is we asked about spending. This is definitely not an apples to apples comparison at all. Um, but we asked about how much people are spending per month on interconnection costs versus how much they're spending on automation costs, automation software and tooling. Uh, just just as a you know random comparison, what's interesting is they're almost kind of the inverse of each other. So about 55% of the folks who answered the survey said they're spending less than $1,000 a month on automation tooling, whereas about that same number said they're spending over $10,000 a month on interconnection tooling. Again, I don't know exactly what that means. It's not a great comparison, but just as far as like where people are spending money. Um, and then, of course, you know, a third of the people who answered the survey decided not to talk about the money piece, which is totally fine, but it also means that we don't have full data for what's going on in the, in the money side of things. Um, but definitely, I think, an interesting data point. When you look at staffing, um, it lines up much more evenly. You can kind of even see it on the, on the colors of the graph here. But easier to see here, um, around half of folks don't have any dedicated interconnection staff, nor do they have dedicated automation staff. Again, that might not match up, but um, the percentages kind of do. And then all the way through, you know, whether it's one person on that team, two people, three to five, or, or over five, the, it's, it's fairly equivalent as far as how people are staffing for interconnection versus automation. Again, totally unrelated, um, but just a, a reference point to see where folks are spending money and, and putting time and, and effort into things. Um, here's one that I found really, really interesting. Uh, and again, this is the eye chart, but we'll go into this and look at this. So we asked another question, right? So the first question, well, one of the questions was, what is fully automated in your network? And then another question was, what's partially automated in your network? And then the final question was, what should be automated in your network? Um, and there's some you know, interesting answers here of like what people think should be automated, but I think what's more interesting to me is that none of these are 100%, which means that maybe people misunderstood the question or maybe I wrote the question badly, um, but it's interesting to me that out of 78 people, um, there's not any one thing that all of them agreed should be automated. Now, maybe they're answering the question differently than I meant it. Maybe they're saying, oh, I already automated that, so it doesn't need to be, so it shouldn't, I don't know. Um, or maybe 40% of people really don't think the service provisioning should ever be automated. I don't know. I'd love to know. Uh, if you answered no to these things, um, I'd, I'd like to understand why. It would be great to have a conversation either here at the mic or, or later, because this is one that confuses me. I thought these numbers would be higher on the should it be automated side. Um, another thing that showed up was a potential skills gap. Again, maybe not a surprise, um, but we, I, I asked, you know, do you consider yourself a networking expert? Pretty solid majority said yes, which makes sense. Again, the survey went out to the Nanog mailing list and, and some other places where, where folks like yourselves hang out. Uh, we asked, you know, do you consider yourself an interconnection expert? Again, it's definitely um, the majority said yes. And then we asked, do you consider yourself an automation expert? And it flips pretty quickly. So we look at these numbers kind of broken out. Um, you know, again, the, the, the actual stats themselves probably aren't very significant, but I think order of magnitude makes sense here. You know, 65% said, yes, I'm a networking expert. 58% said, yes, I'm an interconnection expert, but only 27% said, yes, I'm an automation expert um, of the same group of people who answered these questions, which means about 73% of us, at least according to this survey, are uncertain of our automation skills, which may be a driving force behind some things not being as automated as we may want them to be. Uh, so here's a quick summary of, of, of kind of what that all looks like. So again, 78 fairly diverse respondents, 40% um, of the network 
collectively is automated according to the survey. About 90% of the people who answered are doing some kind of home brewing, and 80% are using some kind of uh, open source software, with you know, less than 31% actually using a commercial tool to do their automation. Uh, of those people who are, who are home brewing, 94% um, are using uh, Python, and then of, of everybody who answered, at least 46% are using Ansible. And I say at least because, um, again, the way the questions were worded may have been a little bit confusing. I think some, some people answered Ansible as a programming language that they were using, and some people answered it as an open source tool they were using, and some people answered it as a commercial tool they were using, um, because it happens to fit into several categories. Um, and I'm not sure if it was the same person who answered all three of those ways, or if it's different people. So it's at least 46% are, are using Ansible, and it could be a little bit higher than that. 55% um, of organizations out there don't have any dedicated automation staff and 73% of, of the respondents are uncertain of their automation skills. So that's kind of a quick summary there. Um, and as far as what's next, I'd like to do this again. Um, I hope that the 78 responses here gives us kind of a baseline and we can ask the same questions and maybe add some questions, maybe tweak some questions and then start to show trends over time, which I think will be even more interesting. Um, so I would love feedback on the survey itself. What could be better uh, if you did answer it and didn't say that everything should be automated. I'd love to hear why. Um, and uh, if you didn't answer it, um, maybe you know what stopped you, if there was a reason not to, or maybe you just didn't hear about it. Um, or any questions about the results at all? I'd like to take those. Uh, hi, uh, Alex Bortek. Um, uh, so uh, a few comments first. So what uh, was most interesting to me to see from the results is what people already automated, what they think should be automated, mm -hmm. and what do they use for automation. Uh, now, th there was no surprises there, uh, but one of the things that I th think it would be good to improve the next array is, you know, this question about I use OSS, but I don't pay for support. Mm -hmm. Question is, would you pay for support? Ah, oh, fair. Right? Uh, yeah, that would be, I think, very important to, for people to learn uh, so that they could keep investing in open source and somehow, you know. That makes sense, yeah. For that, right? All right, yeah. thank, thank you, you very much for what you do. Mahesh uh, Jetanandani, Arcus. First of all, thank you for um, doing the survey. And um, I think uh, the direction that you're trying to get to maybe, I don't know, uh, when you're talking about um, the what part of the survey. I think one of the subtle or maybe the underlying question that I had was, what is the barrier that the, uh, your surveyors felt to get to automation? Uh, maybe one of the questions is, what is pulling them back? Are they looking for more tools? Are they looking for a more comprehensive set of um, a page that kind of describes all the capabilities? Maybe that's something that uh, uh, I would love to talk to you also about. Yeah, I like time. that as a question. And yeah, I'd definitely like to talk to you about it as well. OK. Hi, uh, Lyndon Nirenberg from Hushmail. Um, first off, wow, this is really cool data. I'm really glad you did this. I hope this keeps going. Thanks. In the skills survey, um, you're basically asking expert or not. That seems extremely binary. Um, and I think expert's probably one of the most misused words in the English language these days anyway. Yeah. Just as a suggestion, it would be really interesting if we could get a more granular breakdown on that. Because I know if I was answering that question, I wouldn't be able to. You know, I consider myself knowledgeable to a degree, but I'd never call myself an expert. That's fair. It could be a, a scale instead. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. just... Um, like level of knowledge, yeah, that makes sense. Give it a shot. No, I like that. Thanks. thanks. Hi, this is Isa from T-Mobile. And uh, the question I have for you, do you believe what devices you are using in your infrastructure can impact your ability to automate? Like, from your experience, are you more successful in automating Juniper over Cisco or routers over firewalls? Because... I think this is one of the challenging areas. Different devices from different vendors do not have the same support for automation. And this is one of the reasons why it's not easy to do it when it comes to reality. I agree with you. I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to say which I think are, are the easiest or, or not right now. Um, but I do think that that does have a huge effect. And maybe asking about that would be a good idea. Yep. Yeah. 
I think you're right. Especially, and also not just, you know, not just different vendors, but also different models and also different exactly. age. Like, like what yes. software are you running? And, and what is this device? And can it even be, able, there's devices that don't have interfaces that are very easy to automate, right? Yeah, yeah, like for example, you will find some Cisco devices that will give you a G JSON format for your output. Others will not be able to do it. And right. That will impact your ability on how can you automate these devices and for what need. Absolutely, yeah, but good thanks point. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Hey, Chris, Steve Plout from Plout & Associates. Um, so your early statistics are all really, really good, but it would be helpful to probably do a standard deviation for those as well, not just the mean and the median. That way you Fair can enough. get an idea of how much, how close things are to the mean versus is it spread out really wide on the data. And that would help us a lot as well, I think. So yeah, good point, thought. thanks. Cool. Yeah. Ben Shapiro, uh, Eugene School, District 4J. Chris, thanks for the survey. It's really helpful because I uh, fall into that 73%. I don't know what to automate in my network uh, because in some ways I design for the simplest uh, parsimonious system. And uh, this helps guide uh, what should be automated um, in my network. And it'd be great to see some more granularity and also some more stats up there. My, my question was asked before me. <laughs> Which is uh, to see more stats, so uh, to get a range um, that helps me make decisions on what should be automated in my network, because I struggle with that question all the time. Sure, sounds good. Uh, David Swafford, I'm curious as you were developing the questions, uh, or maybe if you consider expanding, have you thought about asking or trying to understand the breakdown of how many people are trying to build their network? in automation first before mm. they try to configure or generate a config. Um, I think that'd be really interesting to see. That's interesting, yeah. And I think there's probably some questions around the use of source of truth more generally uh, as well, right? Whether it's automation is source of truth driven or not, it's maybe the baseline. And then are you actually designing in the source of truth and then deploying from there? Yeah, that's a great set of questions, I think. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thanks. Uh, Vicky Risk from ISC. I've uh, done quite a few surveys myself. And I sympathize, it's really hard to get people to answer the surveys. And um, one thing that people look at is how many choices are on the screen. And if there's more than like five, they're like, oh, there's a lot of work. Fair. And so get, since you've already done it once and you kind of know what your top hitters are, I noticed you had a lot of extra choices at the bottom that really tapered off. You just get rid of those and put in other, let them write it in in case something hot you know, pops up next time you get more people answering the survey. Another thing that helps is um, if you give them the option of seeing like instant results at the end where they can see like where their answers oh. fit in with the others, it's kind of motivating. Cause I'm guessing if you looked, a lot of people started the survey and didn't finish it. Did you have a lot of people drop out? Not too many, actually. Oh, really? Luckily. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a very committed group then, because there yeah. a lot of questions there was. to answer. <laughs> <laughs> and that was also the balance, too, was trying to get as much information as possible without yeah, drowning people in questions. Right, so right. And it's it. also yeah. hard when you're not sure if people who answered your question understood it the same way you did, like with what needs to be automated. But if you put a lot more words on there explaining it, then there'll also be like too many words, too many words. Yes. <laughs> anyway, it's a great survey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's helpful. Hi, Chris, Tony um, from DevBox. One question on my side maybe is, um, or maybe one question to add to the survey would be how much buy-in is there from the organizations of the people um, who answer the survey? So um, how much buy-in is there for automation in the organization? Yeah, yeah, good. And that's what I was trying to suss out a little bit with the money questions, because I think in some cases it's really easy to say, yeah, we support this. We're, we're all about automation. Um, and sometimes they're following the money. But I think maybe directly asking that does make a lot of sense. Yeah, I like that. All right. Um, and so I, I will want to talk about this. So one thing that I definitely missed was having higher education as a choice. So there was at least a couple of people who entered that as an other. Uh, I missed like the uh, regional education networks and, and university networks, which I think are a little bit different than the others. So that'll be added. Um, also, a couple of people wrote in uh, some type of security type role. Um, there was only a couple of them, but again, it wasn't an option. So uh, we'll probably look at adding that next time. Um, as far as what's automated, um, Automated backups and automated firewall rules were things that I didn't have as selections that people wrote in. 
Um, and then also there was some slight bit of kerfuffle around this thing being a Google, Google form. Um, a couple of people didn't like having to have a Google account in order to answer the form, um, which of course, you know, with the Google form, you can lock it so that more than one person, the person can't answer more than once, which I liked. Um, but it also meant that you had to use, you know, some kind of Google account to do it, which uh, I granted, you know, is not probably the right thing to force everyone to do to answer the survey. So we'll look at all those things next time as well. All right. Thank you. Thank you.